Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go all over meters. When we're talking about meters, we're not talking about arrangement and writing stuff. We're talking about visual representations while we're mixing or working on our projects. These are things like peak meters, RMS, and everybody knows it, the LUFS, or we're just going to call it LUFS from now on. So just to make things easy. We're going to go over these different meters, how to use them, and then you can use this to choose which ones you want to look at while you're working on your productions. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look at our meters. All right, so here we are inside of our session, and I do have a video out there going over the different meters that we can see when we're looking at our faders. And we'll probably touch on this a little, but right now our primary thing that we're using is going to be Studio One's level meter. There's other options out there, and I'll show you those in a little bit, but we're just gonna start with level meter because it's gonna cover almost everything that we need it to. And let's start with the fast stuff. And by fast, I mean peak metering. Peak metering is exactly what you think it is. It will measure the very loudest bits of whatever your source material is. It's the loudest point and it's an instantaneous read. It's, it's extraordinarily fast and it's just checking where your peaks are. What I would suggest for peak metering is making sure that one, when you're getting ready to record, that you're not putting too much signal in. You wanna check your peak meters to make sure that you're not overdriving or going into the red and clipping your converters. Another thing you can check for is as you're mixing, you can make sure that your peak levels are not too loud if you're only mixing and maybe sending off to a mastering engineer. You wanna give them a little bit of room with the peaks. Whenever they say they need a bit of headroom, that's really what they're talking about, is that peak level. Up next, I wanna slow down a little, and I wanna talk about RMS metering, or root mean squared. It's the mathematical equation to give you the average level of your source material. So it takes a bit more time, and it's closer to how we hear as humans. So you'll notice that there's always gonna be a difference between your peaks, which are very fast and will be snappy, and your RMS levels, which are generally slower, and they give you just the relative volume or the relative level of whatever the source is. If we look at level meter on the bottom right, we can see RMS len, and this is giving us, and this is giving us the RMS length. And we have it set right now by its default at 0.6 seconds. So you can see it's not instantaneous, it's 0.6 seconds or about 600 milliseconds. So it gives you an average level, but it's still pretty quick. It's not long-term or anything like that, but it is still how we hear. This is where it came from. And I have it hidden under here, but it's kind of how VU meters work. VU meters are the ones you're used to seeing on like your compressor or on the big analog consoles across the meter bridge or on your tape deck or anything like that. This is exactly what you think it is. It's the needles. And I'm just gonna open up another one right here. I'm just gonna pin our level meter and open up VU on our drums. So this is the PreSonus VU meter. And again, this is at its default, but it's going to give you that same kind of RMS approximation average sound. You'll see this kind of bump up and down, especially because this is the one that's on my drum bus right now. So you will get some spikes, but it's just saying that it's relatively loud at some points, but it's not giving you the peak meter. Your peak meter might be clipping where your VU meter or your RMS meter is nowhere even close. So you do have to use these things in tandem. I'm gonna close out the VU meter and we're gonna keep pressing on. Looking back at level meter, we're gonna see that in default mode, or when you first pull up an instance of level meter, you start in TP. TP stands for true peak, which is very similar to peak metering, but with some minor changes. This checks for true peaks or intersample peaking. The quick once over of intersample peaking is our sample rates, 44.1, 48K, so on and so forth. As the computer is taking those digital pictures of your analog sounds through the converter, it does it that many times per second, 44,100 or 48,000 pictures of your analog audio per second. That's where these numbers come from. As it's doing those pictures and the calculations to do that, it does create little lollipop points. And we're all used to seeing this, but it's still a digital representation where the intersample peaks is perhaps your 
waveform is going up when it takes a picture almost at the apex of the waveform. And then it takes another picture just after the apex. So then between those two samples is a peak. That's what intersample peaking is. And that's what true peak looks for. It notices within the samples if there's still a chance of the amplitude going up above between those different samples or those different pictures of your analog audio. So true peak takes that into account. Peak metering gets really, really close. True peak, that's what it's made for. So now we're going to get into long-term kind of metering. And now we're talking about LUFS, L-U-F-S. And so within level meter, if you go over to R128, in here, you have the option on bottom, and I did this already, to select LUFS, or loudness units full scale. If you hover over, it'll tell you that, L LUFS scale. So when we're talking LUFS or LUFS, there are actually three different meters or three different scales that we're working with. Really, this is the amount of time that the LUFS meters are looking at. And we're gonna start with the fastest and we're gonna slow down from there. The fastest being M or momentary. This is very similar, if not the same, as RMS. It's not peak metering. It's closer to RMS because this is about 400 milliseconds. This is momentary. So it's not peak metering and it's a little bit faster than RMS. Slowing down from M or momentary is S or short term. You can see it popped up right there. Short term is generally about three seconds worth of audio and it's the past three seconds. So that's why you'll see that momentary will change very fast. S or short term will change slower, but still kind of quick because it has more information to get that general level at. And then we can slow things down even more and we can go to integrated or int. Integrated is the LUFS measurement over however long your project is or however long it's listening for. So if I have this on and I let it play for 10 seconds, it will have 10 seconds of information to store and kind of average on the LUFS scale. If I play it for 30 seconds, it has more information and will get more of an average. It's more data points for it to figure out what that LUFS number should be. For your whole song, that's everything it can look at, the loudest parts, the quietest parts, and it will find the average through your entire project. Now let's talk about where should these things be. And that is a very heated debate that you'll find through all of the different audio communities. And probably the most famous one is minus 14, minus 14, minus 14. Things have to be minus 14 because this streaming service said so. I've talked to a lot of mastering engineers and minus 14 is not a target level. Minus 14 is the normalization level of Spotify. If you have that option on, then it will balance the songs that are on Spotify to minus 14. But you'll probably find some songs on there that actually have an LUFS meter closer to like minus 11, minus nine. If it's a crazy loud EDM song, it might be really close to like minus four. And those are extraordinarily loud. Streaming services like YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon, every one of them, they have their targets. And that is what they will normalize the different songs to. So if you're listening to something like classical or jazz, and then in your mishmash playlist, you have some really heavy metal songs or some EDM stuff, you're not going to get blasted with volume when it goes from the classical sounds to the modern sounds, which are generally produced much louder. That's what that's doing. So it's not saying, hey, you should master your stuff to minus 14. It's saying, no, if you want, we'll put everything to minus 14 so you aren't constantly changing the volume knob on your playback system. Another one that we're gonna talk about that's in level meter is LRA or loudness range. This is the difference between 
your peak levels and those average levels. And you'll find this to be very different across many different songs. It's how dynamic your song is. What are the loudest bits versus the average? And what are the softest bits versus its average? That's what the loudness units are measuring or the dynamic range is looking for, is that difference between the average sounds and the peak sounds. So let's very quickly take a look at these meters in action. What I'm gonna do is get level meter kind of smaller and out of the way a little bit. And we're gonna put level meter over here. And then I am gonna just kind of leave the VU meters up over here. And then let's do one more just as a showcase. Okay, so now let's take a look at these meters in action. On level meter, which is on my mix bus, I have it set to the LUFS metering system. So we're going to take a look at momentary, short term, and integrated here. Then on my main output, I have the Brainworks BX meter. This is going to show us our peak levels, it's going to show us our RMS levels, and it's going to show us our loudness units or our dynamic range. That's going to be in the center here with some blue bars. And then you'll see two different meters on the left and right, which are going to be our peak and our RMS levels. Then I'm just going to leave my VU meters across my different buses over here. So you can watch the VU meters dancing around. You can watch a peak and RMS meter that's also going to show dynamic range. And you can see how an LUFS meter will change over time. All right, here we go. It's a song I've been working on. It's kind of roughed in. I'm still building things up, but let's watch these meters dance around. So there you go. That's the explanation of the most common meters that we're talking about these days and how to use them and maybe when to use them or suggestions of when to use them. Also, I'm curious, which meters do you guys prefer? Are you a VU meter kind of guy because you came from the analog days and you know where you want things to sit on a VU? Or are you more worried about LUFS? Are you worried about your peak levels or your true peak levels? I want to know. So let me know in the comments below. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For booking information, check out timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.